Pirates buy more, engage more, want to discover more content, and are willing to pay if they're given good reason to buy. Furthermore, piracy doesn't only happen in poor countries where people can't afford to buy media. It is widespread all across Europe, Russia, Australia, Canada, and the US. So rather than stigmatizing people as thieves, maybe the entertainment industry would be better off acknowledging that pirates are just underserved customers. Example. You probably already know that the music label sued peer-to-peer -peer service Napster back in 1999. But it wasn't just that. They also refused to license any streaming service for more than five years after the lawsuit. This, even though the online services back then were very willing to negotiate terms with the labels. That story is still sadly relevant, even today. Only 16% of the most popular and critically acclaimed movies are currently available through on-demand services such as Netflix. Music services do get better coverage, but their libraries vary immensely due to strict licensing. To the average Joe, the market is really confusing and extremely fragmented. You need to sign up for a bunch of different services, each with its own limitations and coverage to finally get what you want. A recent study has revealed that a UK citizen needs to use no fewer than 27 different services to get access to the day's most popular films. That's like going to McDonald's and getting one single French fry from each restaurant. Could you imagine driving around the city to 27 different restaurants just to get that damn order of French fries? Now you know how we feel, Mr. Chairman. Of course, no service includes the most recent movies, which are only available in theaters. And let's not forget to mention that these services aren't available in most places around the world, and that their catalogs are quite considerably limited to each particular country. And finally, there's the giant pink elephant in the room. The disproportionate pricing of media compared to the income of your average consumer. There is no way you can expect people from developing countries to pay the exact same price as people in the UK or US would. That $9 album is sometimes what people would pay for an entire week's worth of food. So dear Mrs. Music Executive, we think it's time you did something positive for your business and fired your marketing strategist for being an ignorant clown. We don't know how to draw an ignorant clown, but that doesn't mean it's not true. Because you see, this just leaves us, the users, faced with an immense gap. Availability, convenience, and price adjustments that authorized services fail to deliver, but unauthorized ones do. Users seem interested in getting new stuff into their homes, but the industry business model quite stubbornly refuses to adapt to this. And frankly, piracy is often the only option you have when you want to watch the latest episode of your favorite show, read the latest book, or listen to the latest album from your favorite band. Want less piracy? Then make it easier for us to get your stuff. We are all clients whose needs aren't being met. We are all underserved customers. Piracy is always an easy target when you invest a lot of money. But it seems it's merely a scapegoat, a symptom of the industry's own failures. Distribution, quality, and pricing are the real enemies. And if you don't trust us, trust the largest scale study on piracy to date, which concluded there was no link between piracy and organized crime, that enforcement hasn't worked till now, and most importantly, that high prices for media goods Low incomes and cheap digital technologies are the main ingredients of global media piracy. Meanwhile, legal media markets are correspondingly tiny and underdeveloped. Now, a big thing we have to point out is that even though we believe it should be legal to share files for non-commercial purposes, we do see that there are a lot of pirate sites which are as greedy as the whole industry. They make a ton of money from advertisements without giving anything back to the artists. Also, there are a lot of indie labels out there, just like there are a lot of independent publishing houses and movie studios which really do look after the author and are genuinely committed to spreading their work worldwide. They deserve to make a buck from their work as much as anyone. But siding with the industry on piracy is never a good thing. 
It's true that they're pouring an incredible amount of money into campaigning against piracy. But that's how they got the police to raid the house of a nine-year-old girl and confiscate her Winnie the Pooh laptop. That's how they sued people for $150,000 just for downloading one stupid movie. Or even worse, extorted 23,000 downloaders into paying $2,000 a pop so they don't get dragged into court. Yes, these are real cases. Piracy really pays big bucks to the industry. Many times over that $9 album. But guess what? All the revenue from fighting piracy goes directly to the authors. Nah, we're just kidding. Of course it doesn't. The big rights holders don't even seem to be concerned about the artist's well-being. They're notorious for making deals that get them up to 90% of all revenues. They're quite well known for treating the artist as a commodity, and they're crew a lot like slaves for hire. Big business seems to screw the artist over far more than any pirate could by downloading a $9 album. But finally, there's the internet this widely democratic system that gives artists the liberty to leave the big rights holders and make it on their own, or sign much better deals with indie producers. And here's the most important thing. If there's anything you should remember from this video, is this, and we can't stress it enough. Even if piracy does impact revenues, industries, jobs, or artists, going against piracy over the internet is not a solution. Because the IP industry's idea of a safe internet is pushing for more and more control. They're lobbying for creepier laws that plan to even get you in prison for 10 years for piracy, and scaling down the internet to a structure that they can handle. And that is something similar to watching a TV station which only allows rich people the right to speak and be heard. And if you thought it's tough now as an artist, just wait until piracy is gone and obscurity takes over. Your chances of being heard will be close to none. As creation tools become cheaper and more democratized, we all naturally become creators in some way. And if you think piracy is a ludicrous topic, just step into the world of copyright for a second. Here, three notes of a song is all it takes to qualify for copyright infringement. Remixing anything, making a meme or a funny video from TV are copyright infringement. Even forwarding an email is copyright infringement. And the fines for those infringements are even hundreds of times higher than those for piracy. Piracy is only the tip of an enormous and pretty ugly iceberg. And it's probably the ugliest iceberg you've ever seen in your life. It's crooked, swollen, hairy, full of huge, disgusting boils, and smells exactly like the industry. Rotten. Copyright is about control, and we'll dive deep into the subject in our next episode.